If you've watched the news recently, or the more likely option of browsing Reddit, you would have seen that it's constantly filled with conflicts amongst humans. These conflicts can range from something as tame as a Karen getting five chicken nuggets instead of six, and then turning into a velociraptor in front of all of the minimum wage workers, all the way to Daddy Putin having a mental breakdown after seeing a gay person, which in turn pushes him into a fit of country invading rage. I really gotta stop saying stuff like this or I'm gonna wind up in a river somewhere with cinder blocks tied to my feet. Anyway, my point is that at the end of the day, humans are still animals, and our primal instincts can kick in at any moment in a fast food joint when it comes to defending our honor. But what other animals face such turmoil and hardships throughout their lives? What animals are constantly at war with other species, protecting their own kind from what, to them, is considered the greatest conflict of their time? How does the sheep deal with a lifetime of coyote attacks? How do one trillion lions stack up against their arch nemesis, the largest American planet, the sun? We'll be taking a look at what I consider to be some of the greatest conflicts within the animal kingdom in this video. Starting off, we'll take a look at ants. Growing up, I was taught ants were some of the most powerful insects on Earth when it comes to the size to weight ratio. They're capable of lifting around 10 to 50 times their body weight. Imagine if a human could do that. To put it in perspective, imagine if you weigh 200 pounds. You could press roughly 4,000 pounds over your head. That's like 8 League of Legends players, max. Ants have survived mass extinction events. Not even dinosaurs could do that, losers. They've been around for millions of years, and you'd hopefully learn a thing or two about survival in that time. And survive they do. With over 10,000 trillion ants inhabiting the globe, no wonder there's a housing crisis. I mean, look at these little guys. They're so cute. How could something like this have any enemies? Enter. Anteater. Look at this fucking thing. This is the ant sleep paralysis demon. It was created with one purpose. To slurp insects. The stats of these two creatures are incomparable. It's like if Mike Tyson had to fight a colony of babies. The odds? Stacked. The comparison? Paled. Ants have about three methods of defense in this matchup, but no real advantage other than the sheer amount of them. Anteaters can eat up to about 30,000 ants per day. So as long as the ants bring at least 30,000 and one, the odds of victory increase insignificantly. Another method ants have is the use of soldier ants, which is at the forefront of ant weaponry. Soldier ants have much stronger mandibles. They work like little pincers and do a little grabbing on the phallic-like mouth of the anteater. But, since the anteater's tongue is capable of shooting in and out of its mouth over 160 times a minute, this defense is usually useless. Another method the ants use is chemical warfare. Ants are capable of releasing pheromones to attract other soldiers to the front lines. They also produce an acid when they bite that inflicts minuscule amounts of poison damage to the anteater. A pretty cool fact about anteaters is that they don't produce any stomach acid. As the ants sting, they release formic acid, which in turn is used to digest all of the ants. So my question is this, if an anteater doesn't produce any stomach acid, then why is it always eating so many antacids? <laughs> my bad. This is currently a 100-0 matchup in every regard, unless it's somehow every ant in the world bloodlusted versus every anteater in the world at regular strength. Since that's not an actual event that will ever happen, I'll have to say it's an anteater dub every day. We're gonna stay in the insect realm for the next topic and take a look at bees. Now these little guys are apparently pretty important. Like human race ending, Thanos finger snapping, I'm sorry little one important. Don't ask me how or why, cause the only bee knowledge I have is in the form of movies and jazz. The bee is another one of those long lasting lines of evolution. They've been around for millions of years, so they've definitely obtained 200 mil defense XP by now. Regardless, they have jobs, and a queen, and a place to live, and all of these things are constantly at stake in their typical day to day. They've been at war for a millennia with this creature, the hornet. I know you probably have a few choice words for me about this. You fool. The largest hurdle bees face is obviously pollution. Or if it's confined to the animal realm, it's obviously not a bee-adjacent creature. And to that I say, just look at the lore, my friend. The stats are almost identical. They're both tiny winged exoskeletons with powerful stingers and a soul-shattering bzzz that emanates deep from within their being. They both pollinate, they both make hives, although the bees are maybe a little more structurally sound and don't look like an anime villain's mask. But the list just goes on when it comes to comparisons. The most common type of both of these insects are the western honeybee and the bald-faced hornet. Hornets are known for being a complete waste of oxygen and terrorizing bees and bee-adjacent insects for no reason other than gang-related violence. Thankfully, bald-faced hornets aren't too large of a threat due to the bee's plot armor, which is the beekeeper. Being about 45,000 times the size of a hornet and having access to powerful armor and chemicals definitely has its perks. The honeybee is eternally grateful for this. But what about other hornet species? Like this absolute specimen, the murder hornet, or better known as the giant Asian hornet. This thing strictly exists for what its name states, annihilation. With a stinger that's long enough to pierce a beekeeper's suit, the bees have a new reason to feel fear. These hornets are responsible for 50 human, non-bee deaths annually. And now that they've somehow migrated like pirates across the sea to the US, the poor western bees are buzzing in fear. 
We're talking genocide levels of death. The bee's only real defense against these freaks of nature is suffocating the hornet. The honeybees swarm the hornet, forming a ball around them. This tactic warms them up to such a degree that they cook them alive. However, this performance expends quite a few bees in the process, and in the end, it is still a losing battle. At this point, all we can do is believe in them and hope they learn how to weaponize the honey in the form of rocket-propelled grenades. The next topic takes a look at some of our closest relatives. Of course, the animals closest to humans partake in war. That just makes sense. Back in the 70s, a research center known as the Gombe Stream was opened in Tanzania. It was the home of several different animals, but the most prominent were the chimpanzees. These chimps were once unified in the Gombe Stream as the Casaquila community, living together in peace. Jane Goodall, who is known for her PhD in monkeying around, considered chimps to be much nicer than human beings. But what was about to unfold would open up the dark side of chimps. In 1971, the Casaquila tribe's leader, Mike, who was known for his very chimpanzee-like name, had died. This was the start of a fallout within the tribe. Over the next nine months, a group of nine adult chimps along with their young claimed the southern portion of territory within the Casaquila area, which was then dubbed as the Kahama. This newfound region was led by the chimpanzee Charlie, alongside other chimps named Hugh, Goaty, Day, and Goliath. Within the original Casaquila clan, the male chimps Sherry, Humphrey, Rodolph, Jomeo, Fegan, Everett, and Satan remained. This is when tensions started to escalate and a proverbial border was formed between the two tribes. It started with some Cold War vibes, just writing letters and screaming at each other to assert dominance before quickly retreating into hiding once more. These mind games went on for another year, until a group of six original Casaquila clan members worked up the courage to ambush the southern clan. Godi of the Kahama clan was the first to be taken. This great ape was hit with ground and pound game for over 10 minutes, until he was just left on the forest floor to pass away from the injuries he had sustained. Over the next four years, more of the Kahama clan was picked off in a similar fashion. The chimp Goliath, who was originally a high-ranking male in the unified Casaquila clan, was slain by five of his old friends. After this successful attack, the chimps were found hitting tree trunks and throwing rocks as if they were celebrating something. The remaining chimps were soon taken care of in the same way, and the Casaquila clan had taken the southern territory as their own once more. Researchers were torn on what sparked these events. Some stated it was a banana shortage at the research center. This would have led to a feast or famine type scenario. But the notes that Jane Goodall and her team took while observing this four year war state it was a battle for power and status, which is eerily similar to humans. Since the original Gombe Chimpanzee War, there have been more documented large scale conflicts between chimpanzee groups in Uganda and Tanzania. The last topic for the day is going to cover a rather popular animal. One you may have a general disdain towards for one reason or another. The common white tailed deer. The deer has dozens of natural predators, due to its lack of intelligence and general interest in roadways. On a daily basis, these animals are taken out by bears, humans, wolves, alligators, a slight breeze, or even the walking dead zombie virus. And it's a 100-0 matchup, not even worth talking about. But there's another, even more intimidating predator that they've developed combat methods against for the last 50 some odd years, and that's the compact car. Worldwide, about 1.5 million deer-related accidents occur each year. That's about a 1 in 127 chance of hitting a deer while driving, which is roughly a million times more likely to happen than getting hit by a flying vending machine. But don't count that out either. As humanity progresses, more and more roadways are built. This means the wildlife is usually left with no choice but to cross these roads to get from point A to point B. The deer, being the selfless creature they are, forge a path for their furry friends, knowing the risks they face when they do so. Deer have yet to develop any kind of armor or weapons to defend against the likes of the Kia Soul, but you have to remember it's only been a few years since cars were born. Deer have specialized in hiding among the foliage until the Kia closes in, and then as soon as the time is right, they pounce, striking the Kia head on, stopping it dead in its tracks. This typically ends in a draw. As time goes on, it'll be interesting to see what new tactics the deer develop for this matchup. As of right now, it's 50-50. As always, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to leave a like and a comment, and be sure to subscribe for more similar content in the future.